Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. Today is August 21st. I already covered one of today's anniversaries, which is the death of the first known victim of abortionist Lucy Hagenow. Um, she was a very prolific and lethal abortionist. She uh, had a lot of dead women to her discredit. You can follow the link below to information about her first victim, and that, that includes a little about her career as well. The other anniversary I'd like to cover today is another example of the common knowledge among abortion rights activists where they keep recycling stories of women's abortion deaths with zero substantiating documentation. Um, so if you know what the substantiating documentation is supposed to be for this case, please provide it. I don't like just, oh, somebody said this happened. Uh, and then if enough people say it, it's true. Um, but let's go ahead and assume that what they say is accurate. So according to the stories that keep getting circulated, and I provide a link to one of them, a young woman named Ruth, whose last name I don't want to try to pronounce because I'm going to bungle it. Uh, Ruth was a married 27-year-old mother of two living in Denver in 1929. Uh, these sources say that her pregnancy was life-threatening, but they don't specify why. They don't say what medical condition she had that her doctor believed that a future pregnancy would be life-threatening. Um, and they don't say why, if this pregnancy was life-threatening, she wasn't able to arrange a legal abortion. Because even when there are laws against abortion, doctors were not prosecuted for good faith attempts to save a mother's life. So the, um, the story that circulates is that Ruth drank Ergo Apial, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, an herbal abortifacient on August 21st of 1929. And that night, the story says, she collapsed at the dinner table in front of her husband and children and died on the spot. I can find um, Ruth on Ancestry. I can find her on Find a Grave. But again, all we have is a reiteration of the story. After having her daughter, Ruth was told that another pregnancy would be medically dangerous. When she became pregnant, her uncle, a doctor, said he would not perform an abortion since he could lose his license and be imprisoned. She did not tell her husband she was pregnant and attempted to self-abort by drinking a plant poison. She died that night in front of her husband and two small children. So again, there's there's no source documents at all. No death certificate, no coroner's report, no... Um, come on, brain, why can I not think of it? No newspaper coverage of the event. Um, just this story that keeps circulating. Now, in 1967, Colorado legalized abortion for rape, incest, suspected fetal anomaly, and threat to the mother's life. But again, even before those loopholes were specifically written into law, doctors were not prosecuted for good faith attempts to preserve a pregnant woman's life. So I need verifying information. Um, there are a lot of abortion deaths that, like we, we look at the Becky Bell case. Becky died of, pneumo of pneumonia. She had a miscarriage while she was dying of pneumonia. Her reproductive tract was clean and healthy. I read the autopsy report. But the word abortion, which is the medical term for miscarriage, was on the autopsy report. Her parents latched onto that, and the abortion rights advocates schlepped these people all over the country, claiming that their daughter died, supposedly because she could not arrange a nice, safe, legal abortion, uh, despite the fact that she could have gotten judicial bypass or could have just traveled out of state. It wasn't that far, and when she died, she had information about a maternity home in her purse. So... Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the story is true, that Ruth did believe that this um, pregnancy was medically dangerous to her. There's no indication of why she didn't consult her husband about this. I mean, surely he would have helped his wife to, you know, would have gone and talked to a doctor and said, look, her life is in danger. That didn't happen. Um, what was her medical problem that put her at risk? I would like this information. Not every story that the abortion rights people circulate is false. Irene Campbell, I verified it and it even 
I found a lot more uh, tragic and heartbreaking information than the abortion rights people put out, and I actually provide my sources. So when you go to my site and you look at Irene Campbell, you don't just get this little paragraph put up by an activist. You get actual material that you can cite and show that, yes, this actually did happen. So again, call for sources. If anybody has any sources, please let me know.